Hello everyone and hello YouTube, aspiring DJs, my subscribers and anyone watching this video in general. Uh, this is Calamity and I know it's been a while since I've made a video kind of like this I think. I think I made the tractor review back in December but anyways. Uh, over Christmas I got myself a, uh, a wired Xbox controller and I thought because I'd also been looking at the MIDI fighter, which is uh, a, a 4x4 grid of arcade buttons, and it, it basically just adds on to the functionality of any DJ program, what if this thing could do the same? Uh, a little background on it is that it's not MIDI mappable, but it does send out its own signals that are interpretable by uh, Windows and Mac as well, if you get the proper software. So, what this video is going to be about is how to use an Xbox controller or other controller, a uh, wired PS3, uh, I, I won't even go into thinking about the Wiimote, but anything for DJing. So uh, to start off, you're going to need a program called uh, Glove Pi. I know that sounds weird, but uh, the, the glove's just a word and Pi is, uh, is an acronym for something which I can't remember for the life of me. Uh, you can get that online, it's freeware. Uh, you can also get a um, another program that goes with it. It's a driver install for the most part. It's called PP Joy. You can use PP Joy to uh, use joysticks. Now, when you run GlovePy here, I've got GlovePy. Oh, that's what Pi stands for: Programmable Input Emulator. I've got GlovePy 0.43. So um, the versions may have changed. I believe. 4, uh, 0.44 is out, I'm, I couldn't tell you. But what it comes up as is uh, a large programming window. How GlovePy works is off of scripts. It interprets the input from your controller and then you have to use that and make it run scripts. Now GlovePy is actually sophisticated enough that it's got loops and ifs and, and all kinds of stuff like that. So if you're, if you're knowledgeable with programming it'll be a cinch. Uh, once you learn it, but if not, you can just find the scripts online or find a script online and edit them. Now before I go into explaining how to program for the Xbox 360 controller, I'm, let's take a look at what the computer registers as. Now to do that, you're going to need to go into CP settings like I just did at the top here and then you want to click on joystick because what it registers an Xbox 360 controller as is a joystick. Now a window like this will come up, I believe it's a Windows window so it's not uh, made by the Glove Pie people. It, uh, it shows that I do in fact have an Xbox 360 for Windows controller set up and that its status is okay. Now if you have more than one, it's going to uh, screw up with the numbering and all that, but I'll get into that in a minute. So I'm going to click on properties of this controller, and this window comes up. So this is the properties of the controller, and it looks kind of weird. So let me explain what's going on here. This up here, all this stuff, this is uh, the left stick, right stick, and the triggers. So not right bumper and left bumper, but the triggers. And down here we have 10 buttons as well as the POV hat, which is a fancy name for the D-pad. So let's take a look at what each of these actions does. So, it's going to be hard to position this. My thumb is on the left stick. When you move the left stick, it moves the cursor around. So it act, the left stick's kind of like a mouse. When you move the right stick by comparison, I can't really hold it that well, so when I move the right stick, what it does is it shifts the X and Y axes, which makes the, the right stick a little bit more of a pain to program for. Now the Z axis, um, that's your trigger. So left trigger will increase it and right trigger will decrease it. Uh, and it's, it's fairly easy to program once you just get used to it. Now the buttons, it shows here that there are 10 buttons. So let's run through those. One through four are A, B, Y, and X. So A is one, B is two, uh, X is three, and Y is four. Uh, five and six, uh, five is left bumper, six is right bumper, uh, seven and eight, uh, no, seven is select, eight is start, and nine and 10 are clicking the left and right stick respectively. And point of view hat, that's just any respective direction on the D-pad, although, um, when programming for this, if you do program things to your uh, up and your 
um, the up, down, right and left D-pad controls, then it can be a little tricky to toggle the mid controls there in between them. So uh, let's let's uh, back out of this for a sec and we'll go back to uh, programming it. How GlovePy works is you can start off by, by using loops and telling it to do stuff from there, but we're gonna start off by just doing something simple. I want, when I press the A button, to for it to um, press A on the keyboard. So to do that, I need to type, I need to tell GlovePy that I want to press a key. So to, you simply type in key and then dot A. So as you can see, it comes up with this whole list of, of keys that I could press, right? And I'm, I don't even know what half of these are because some of them are like, for, for one, Excel. I don't know where the Excel key is. I don't even know that we had one on a standard keyboard. So we'll just go space. So we've got key A written there and now equals. So how do we recognize input from the controller? Now we do that by just designating it as a joystick because like when we went into CP settings we had to go into joystick to get it. Now that means that this is registered as a joystick and if we had another one it would also be registered as a joystick and I also guess a joystick would be registered as a joystick. But since we only have one we could just reference it as joystick one. If we had a second one it would be joystick two but since we only have one we can just call it joy. Simple. So we want to register input from our controller, which is joy. So we type joy, and then we go dot, and now it's going to give us a list of buttons to as to uh, what it input it can receive. And there's hundreds of buttons that it's looking for here, and there's all kinds of of, uh, of um, inputs. Now most of those pertain to an actual joystick because there's things that deal with ro. Uh, uh, rotation, but I think they can also be mapped due to the, uh, the fact that the right stick deals with rotation and pitch, or sorry, um, might I say pitch and yaw. So we just want to register input from button one, which is the corresponding key to the A button. So we really just type in button one. We hit enter. So there's our first line of code. Right, very simple. We want when we push A on the controller, we want to push, we want to type A with the keyboard. Now, it's very simple to run a script. You have it here. Uh, you could go the the guided user interface. Uh, I, I actually don't use that. It's uh, it makes it quite hard to, to program more advanced functions. Uh, so I'm not going to cover that. And I don't use variables, so we're not going to cover that either. But there is a run button beside the variable. Now, if we were to run this, let's. Uh, Let's open, let's just make a new word doc, a new document here. Uh, new, come on. New do, new text document. Okay. So as you can see, we have our our name, and I'm going to push A on the controller, right? Nothing's happening. Now I ran into this problem as well when I first started using this, and I will explain to you the fix. So because it, it has to deal with Windows 7, and I think Vista as well uh, has this problem, and surely Windows 8 will have this problem. Um, you need to go into the Troubleshooter and click on Fake Windows 98. So that's Troubleshooter Fake Windows 98. With that selected, when I'm not running, uh, it will allow you to actually run the script. So let's test that again. We'll run minimize this let's edit the name of this text document yep okay so we're ready to edit I got my finger on the A button here now A comes up whenever I push it now you can map this for multiple things like you could have a loop so that that says like when um, whenever you press the A button it could type your name out so to do that I could go uh, I'll, I'll show you how to do that before I show you my mapping for tractor. Uh, so if we wanted to do that, we'd have to use a loop. So we'd go if, and then we'd start the loop pressed. Uh, I'm just going to set the camera down for a sec so I can type this faster. But if pressed button or joy button one dot button one 
equals true. And then, so after all that, you're going to end off with a squiggly bracket. And you, you have to manually end the loop. It's not that, it's not uh, like a compiler. So this is what I just typed. If pressed, joy dot button one equals true and then you start your squiggly bracket and I just did that out of convention from being a programmer. Someone is trying to talk to me on Skype on which I do not care about right now. Anyways, um, so if I wanted to type out Clamity, for instance, I would have to type out that the button you would it would go key dot one equals or the keys would be true. So stuff like that, that's really how you start a loop. I'll give you an example. Actually, I, I really don't feel like coding that. So now I will show you my tractor setup and give you a demo with tractor itself. So I'm going, and it's still a work in progress, mind you, so a bunch of things are messed up. And this is all mapped out for uh, my specific key layout for tractor, which uh, I, I need, I'm going to go over sometime. Uh, so here we go. So for track selection, uh, I, I believe this is still the same as, as regular. So the track selection is used with the D-pad. I can go up and down on the D-pad to make it uh, go up and down by pressing the up and down keys. And for left and right, what it does is it changes the focus of the deck. And so the, these two loops here is respective for left and right. The first one's right. So for the right one here, I say, Push the backslash key, which changes the focus to the the right deck. Wait 30 milliseconds and then hit enter to load the track there. If anything else is pushed, key, the backslash key is zero and the enter key is zero, which means they're not pushed. It's binary. And then the same thing for left, only instead of, uh, back, instead of backslash, it's tab. So that's really simple. That took me all of five minutes to code. And it's really simple to get the hang of. This, again, is really simple to get the hang of. Um, focus. So, uh, V and B I have mapped for playing the left and right decks respectively. So, I've mapped those to the left bumper and the right bumper. Now, this next thing here may look a, bit, a little bit confusing with the left stick. I have it for the base EQ for crossfading. And basically, this ensure map range command gets the position of the left stick. So F and R there, the uh, joy X, that's the X direction. The negative one is to the left and the one is to the right. So I have this mapped out on my keyboard so that um, these two here, R and W and, sorry, R and F and T and G are the base EQs, where R and T are base, base EQ up and F and G are base EQ down. So I've mapped those to there with the left deck being on the x-axis and the y and the right deck being on the y-axis. Um, the crossfader, I, I used to have it on the left stick until I realized that programming the right stick would be such a pain in the ass. I moved the cross, I moved the EQ to the left stick and I moved the um, the crossfader to the trigger so it's really easy. Uh, and then the buttons for the FX, uh, this gets really really stupid. Uh, ignore these ver mode loops. They are broken. They don't work. Uh, so what I what I did is uh, this initial loop here. This ver mode equals equals one. That works because uh, ver mode is initialized as one. But basically, what I have it as is I've got start. I've got select start x y b and a all triggering the six bank the six effects and the two effects banks. So let's uh, make sure that Windows 98 is on. We'll run that. Go down here, launch us some tractor. If I can mouse over it. So we're launching tractor. Just got to give it a minute to come up. But um, if you are a word about using this software for your Xbox 360 controller is uh, I suggest making your own custom mapping because I don't know what tractors is like and I don't think that they have all the commands that I necessarily need or that you necessarily want um, to use. So you'd probably want to uh, to do to make up a mapping yourself. It's really not that difficult. You just need to get the hang of what Tractor software is like. So let's full screen this bitch. You see me there in the background, yeah, yeah. So um, 
I'm gonna go to tracks here and we'll just load some stuff up. So, and this is gonna be all done with my Xbox controller, by the way. So, let's load up um, My Immortal by Wizbit on the left. Uh, yep, on the left. And then we're going to load up uh, What's Up, the Soro UK Hardcore Mix on the right. So, here, I'm gonna show you. It's gonna be kind of hard to see with the right pushing and not actually seeing the controller, but my finger's in the right. When we push right, it switches and then loads. Um, it was tricky. You have to have that weight in, otherwise it'll load it on the current deck before because uh, Tractor interprets the, the keys, the key presses a little strange. It, it interprets them at the same time. Uh, move our crossfader over as we push play. So play buttons. Uh, what I do not have mapped are sync buttons. I don't have those mapped. Um, I don't have pitch I don't have pitch and BPM sliders mapped um, but here let me give you a demonstration even though they're not actually running uh, so select pushes this pushes my gator uh, start is my low beat mash which I usually have it set at 81 uh, a is for flange as you can hear maybe uh, and X, Y, and B are for these respective beat mashes. So let's pause that track. So, um, oh, one, the last little bit is the uh, the EQ. So I push up on the stick, and the EQ goes down. The EQ goes up, and it respectively. Now um, they're non-repeating. If you wanted those commands to, if you do want any of these commands to repeat, like so, you just hold. Say I want holding right to per to just keep increasing the EQ you could reset that you could set it as a repeating command in the tractor in the tractor uh, console when you program it but uh, that could be a problem especially with sticks they they tend to get stuck I mean uh, even when I was showing you guys the properties the right stick got stuck a little off center so it's uh, I wouldn't advise doing that necessarily I mean it's not that hard uh, and as far as the advantages of having a controller, uh, I'm going to do a mix on the controller right after this and upload it as well. But um, instead of, uh, you, you could just use this as a straight DJ controller if you have one and you have the software if you don't want to buy a deck. I mean, you can, it, you can do it. It's not hard. But um, what I plan on using this for, I need to sit down for a while and think about how I'm going to use this in tandem with my mix deck. Uh, so yeah, and uh, speaking of my mix deck uh, and kind of controller related, I subscribe to DJ Tech Tools. I, I suggest you do that. He's the maker of the MIDI Fighter. He recently went to uh, a show. It was uh, NAMM or NOM 2012, and uh, it was really cool. He came back with some news about Behringer putting out uh, like basically a hundred dollar consoles and stuff. Uh, They've got a bunch of things, but mainly what, uh, just for simple DJing, you'd be looking at a CD, uh, CDJs are $100, and the mixers are like $150 each. So you can get really cheap mixers. Uh, he said that they weren't the highest of quality, but for 100 bucks. So, um, oh, yeah, that's my little bit about some DJing news. Anyways, this has been uh, Clamity showing you how to program your Xbox 360 controller using the GlovePi interface to work with Tractor and any other software. I mean, hell, I even played Minecraft with this thing.